Okay, so that's... We just got here. Oh. I thought it was like a beam that I was supposed to... Well, it's faster than the lightning. I'll give it that. But I thought it was some something you had to like... I thought it was a sustained beam. Yeah, per second. Uh. Also, spells can crit. We have an answer on that one. Maybe, maybe it is... Man, I have no idea. I don't know what's going on. I have broken things. It, I mean, I fire it like once per second, give or take, so it's not so bad. I just thought it was supposed to be like a sustained beam move. Okay, right. I need my imps. Gotta resummon everything. Oops. Okay, I'll give it to Ember Lance. It's got, uh. It's got what I need. Namely, it pierces enemies. The lightning. The lightning attack is is nice, but it's a little bit slower. And so this way, especially if my um, my cast speed scales up as we go along, I can go into uh, laser chain gun mode, and that should work out for me. Oh, This also gives me something to do uh, stat point wise, because I think it scales based off of my my magic stats. So if I just pump like buttloads into magic, I can just run around nuking things. It does also mean that uh, that lightning spell was kind of overkill previously. It does also kind of invalidate the whole minion situation. That's oh, fine. Minions! Wow. They, uh, melted him in a hurry. I, I have broken something again. Oh, hey, merchant. Mana, strength, no. None of these are really that helpful. What does he have? Summon zombies too. There is also haste. Don't know if I care. Die. Okay, I will. I will give it a lot of credit. Ember Lance is fun. I don't know if it's gonna scale as well, but it's fun. Okay, so where are we going? Probably down south. This is, I think, by far my least favorite of all of the zones. It's not bad, but the, there's no, like, level design. It's just a, a series of, like, disjointed islands connected by, uh, rope bridges. Makes it kind of hard to navigate comparatively. Let's see. Kind of hard to navigate and, like, not super interesting. But then again, I, I guess I've, I've talked about this before. Level design in uh, in action RPGs has always been a little bit kind of eh. Uh, Victor Vran, I think, is probably my my favorite out of all of them in terms of level design. Because I want to say a lot of the uh, I want to say a lot of the zones were actually like hand designed, and they were like special secrets that you could find in every area, which is really cool. I'm a little I'm a little sad that I've never actually managed to do a full series on the game because it seems neat. Every time I try, I like either end up with people that don't want to play any more of it, or I don't know. Maybe that'll be one that I played alone, or because like it's very clear if I want to finish uh, finish games along the way. I don't know if I need that berserker skill. 
I mean, it makes my minions more ridiculous. I just don't know if they need it. Let's see. But now, one thing I've uh, kind of realized over the years is that if I like want to finish certain games, I really do just have to play it myself. Some some games, even though they be multiplayer and fun, are just going to be too too hard to do otherwise. Part of the reason why I've been like um, doing like EDF, for example, and God Eater alone, even though yeah, I could potentially like cobble together some kind of group for it. Sometimes it's just easier to just be like, eh, it's easier easier to do this on my lonesome. You know, grab fans when they're available, and that's about it. Okay, stairs down. Now, is it two or three? I think it's three. Also, quests. Oops. We've actually got to go back to floor 10. Uh, I mean, I could just ignore ignore the side quests. But yeah, I've apparently missed a, uh, a mid-boss somewhere. Right, so, like, some of these guys are just spitting out, like, two potions apiece. I, I'm just going to sit on the potions for the time being. I thought they were going to be rare. But no, it's... <laughs> They're not rare. They're not rare in the slightest. It's just like, hmm, potions. You want, you want stat points? We got them. I, yeah, I could straight up just, like, crank up my strength by, like, 12 right now if I so chose. I mean, I could. I don't I don't know if it would make, like, that much of an immediate difference. Main... Main problem is just like I'm insta giving everything to begin with, so it's just like, well, I don't know if I can change the difficulty anywhere. I don't think so. I, th I think it is entirely like based on when you when you start. There might be a mod for changing your difficulty along the way. It is nice to actually be uh, an effective member of the party. And boy, am I effective. Let's just dump these. Ooh, Gaston's Band. At minion speed. That's amazing. I'm probably gonna... I'm probably gonna enchant that. But does that do magic damage? It does ice and poison. Okay. Yeah, somebody was mad at me because I was using a regular weapon uh, to base my, my spell damage off of. I'm not actually sure if it doesn't scale off of just whatever weapon you have, regardless of what kind of weapon it is. It just doesn't do, like, elemental damage. Maybe? I don't know. Well, it's fine. That 10% movement speed bonus is, is nice, though is making it a little bit easier uh, to get my minions in place. Because I know I move faster than normal, which is making it a little harder. So yeah, I, I think we're just going to go bananas enchanting that ring. It'd be nice if it kept giving, like, pet-related perks, but I, it'll probably just start giving, like, random stats. That would be nice. Actually, you know what this game needs? I don't know how many of you guys played Darksiders 2. But that had, like, a really interesting, like, uh, leveling weapon system. Where you could, like, feed weapons to each other to, like, gain their effects. I want to see that in one of these games. You know, more, like, direct weapon customization. Because, like, I could, I could see some, like, really wild stuff with a system like that. Eee, Primal Ember. Okay. I feel kind of silly that I, I completely missed that uh, the one side quest. Not that it matters too much, but like, now I'm going to have to actually do some serious backtracking just to finish it. It'd be nice if it just spawned it on whatever the next level is, and then scaled the reward based on like, whatever. Oh well. Okay, uh, let's keep pumping it into min 
Uh, pet mastery. My magic damage insane. I, w I wonder if I do more damage just walking up and whapping things in the face with my stick. Hard to say. I mean, honestly, I do more damage just letting my pets do all the work. I just got jealous. Their kill count is super high, and I'm, I'm just sitting around being like, hmm, have some of my weak-ass poison magic missile. Now I've got snipey beams. My pack is full. No, my pack is full. Bull hockey. My pack is full. Oh. My dog's pack Your is full. Get out of here, dog. Three seconds. Done. Holy crap, alright. Wait, is that faster cast speed? Yeah, it's not as good though. Let's see, extra electric damage, extra defense. Sure. Probably actually use some of these gems. Most of them do resistance though, so I'm a little bit less interested in that sort of thing. Alright, let's send my pet off. It'll be back in uh, no time. Back. I just. Yeah, okay, minion, minion, minion mastery is just too good. Lasers are pretty good too. Because, yeah, I could just sit here just like spit firing lasers left and right. And it works amazingly well. It might not do as much damage as some of my other things, but, uh,. Is real fast and hits everybody. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to seeing what they what they did with Torchlight 2, because I, I played a little bit of it, but I think I only ever got to the desert, which probably means I cleared Act One. Because I think Torchlight 2 followed Diablo 2 very closely. Let's let's give it this ring. Faster movement, some extra poison damage. That's fine. Let's see. What do we have over here? Ooh, merchant. Not that it really changes much. I kind of wish he had, like, interesting rare things on him, but so be it. It looks like it's mostly just rings and gems. Which, admittedly, normally those gems would, would be something that you absolutely want to go for. But, uh, mods make everything easier. Onwards. But yeah, I, it always amuses me uh, about these games. The, uh, you know, the, the same thing kind of happened with, uh, with Torchlight as it did with Dark Souls. Sort of? Where, you know, Tor uh, Diablo 1 and 2 were very distinct games. And then Diablo 3 is like, hey, you remember Diablo 1? And Diablo 2? Well, we're, we've got kind of these homage levels over and over and over again. Um, and it wasn't actually so bad, but like, there were definitely, there was definitely a, a certain lack of originality in the, uh, the biomes that you walked through. And I will admit, Torchlight kind of uh, ignores the whole, like, you're going down into a uh, dilapidated and very clearly evil church in favor of sending you down into caves and, like, ancient crumbling civilizations and stuff. I guess we did go into kind of a crypty thing for a while. First it was a cave, then it was a crypt, then it was, like, a weird jungle? I think I want to say, like, Diablo 2 probably did it best. Because, like, each region was distinct, had multiple biomes within it, side areas, side quests, and it, like, felt like a real adventure. Uh, I liked I liked the claustrophobia of of Diablo 1. Like it was it was fun more or less just going down one long linear dungeon. I mean technically you could say that like Diablo 2 was linear, but it had a bunch of like side caves and stuff to check out, so it didn't feel as like linear. But uh like I don't know, I don't know. I think I think it was fun for Diablo 2 just going from place to place, being like, yeah, 
this is this is somewhere new and interesting to explore and it has it has its own story but oh I'm trying to kill my own zombies damn it but one of the things that I kind of noticed about these ooh, is that better all fire damage is this fire damage it is fire damage One of the things that I found kind of interesting about it is that every every other follow-up game kind of tries to capture lightning. You know, they're, they're trying to do actually the same thing. Uh, you know, they, they, they kind of go through the same, like, pattern. You know, the first game, it's one long dungeon. You know, there might be a little bit of, like, side stuff to do, uh, but you go straight down. Uh, because they effectively want to remake Diablo, but in, you know, in their own style. So, you know, Torchlight 1 did this. Book of Demons did this. There's a couple other ones. Um, and then, like, most of them honestly try and copy Diablo 2, which is probably for the best, but, like, Torchlight 2 very clearly follows the exact same patterns as Diablo 2. Instead of just going down into this one lengthy dungeon thing, you are actually going... You're going places, and there's more of a story. There's a story in this one, but it is is very much like, you know, someone important went insane, and everything is going kind of bad up at, up at town, yada yada. But then again, I guess Torchlight was also made by ex-Blizzard developers who probably, you know, more or less just left after Diablo 2. And when they realized that, yeah, Diablo 3 wasn't coming for a while and made their own studio. Other games have followed this trend. Um, I guess not exactly in the same vein, but Dark Souls kind of did this. You know, Dark Souls 1 and 2. Huh. We'll have to see how this goes. Yeah, yeah Dark Souls was kind of unique and interesting, but very claustrophobic. You know, kind of all in the same location. And you do go to different places, but it all still kind of feels like you're within the same kingdom. Uh, Dark Souls 2 suddenly goes on a trip. You're really changing biomes. And, you know, there's a serious question of, like, how is this next to this? You know, how do you go from a, a molten lava area up to, like, a poison town that was probably a farming community? Uh, you know, that, that sort of thing gets kind of murky. Or is, it, is that vice versa? It might be vice versa, actually. I'm probably taking it in reverse. I am. And it's just like, how, how does this make sense? And the answer is, ugh. who cares? It's Dark Souls. And it's like, yep, that that is true. And then uh, the second game comes around and it's like, oh, hey, we know you like Dark Souls. So uh, we are... Uh, we're just gonna give you Dark Souls 1 again, kind of, but remix slightly different, you know, put a bunch of nods that, you know, it's probably the same location and so on and so forth is going on. And, uh, you know, there, there's there's some originality there, but it, it's very much like, hey, we know you like Dark Souls 1, but, you know, not as, as many, like, unique things? I don't know. Dark Souls 3 was definitely better in terms of, like, setting itself apart, but... It was needlessly fanservice-y, maybe? Maybe not. I don't know. I guess for the lore buffs. It, it was neat being like, oh, hey, we're in Anne Orlando again. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I guess I like going to new places in games, and I feel like by the third game, you don't really need that nod of like, hey, it's the same place. Uh, all over again. You know, we know you really liked this, so here's all the stuff you were missing games do that. Oh, I guess sort of in the same vein. Uh, so same vein? We've got a bunch of, you know, Dark Souls clones kind of coming out. Games that want to kind of match the the same look and feel. And Lords of the Fallen uh, is, I guess, the first one I'd go with. Probably put my videos out on that. Uh, now that I've got uh, some I've level of like, internet here, I could actually start getting that edited up. Um, God, that's an old series that I just have had sitting in the backlog forever. Uh, Phil's been asking me to put that up for ages. Uh, let's see, but yeah, Lords of the Fallen was very much a Dark Souls-inspired game. You know, very claustrophobic, very limited. 
Uh, kind of slow, kind of clunky. Definitely had some bugs. I liked it, I think, despite itself. Uh, the bugs were a serious problem, and I hope... Well, I mean, the Surge was fun. The Surge kind of skipped Dark Souls 2 and went straight for Bloodborne. Honestly. But... It wasn't bad? I don't know. I like... I like Dark Souls clones, because they're, three, they're 3D Metroidvanias at their heart. I'd like to see more that actually, like, follow that trend of, like, true open exploration. Uh, the one thing, like, uh... I guess in Dark Souls 2, at least when you're... When you're going after the initial... boards, let's see. All physical and elemental damage by a bunch. No. I like my Serpent Gauntlets too much. We also have the Spark Sparking Cephalopod Staff. For electric damage, extra damage, physical damage, faster cast speed. It's a bit better. It also has some gem slots, which is important. What I really want are one-handers, though. I gotta keep an eye out for those. But, uh, what's a good example of a, of a proper... Well, I mean Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is probably the best Metroidvania I have ever played, and until Sil Silk Song comes out, it's probably going to be the best Metroidvania of all time. I know that's probably a controversial statement, but still. Um, but so Dark Souls kind of actually really heavily follows Metroidvania styles, and it makes me want to see more games that actually kind of follow the trend as well. I think it's just harder to do. But like, I'd actually really like to play a 3D action RPG set in a very like limited location with a lot more like free exploration, almost maybe even to the point where you get rid of leveling and stuff and you just say like, here's the map, here's a bunch of weapons that you can find. They're all side grades of each other, but distinct with some major differences. Okay, I think, I think we found the boss. Maybe? I don't know. I just want, I just want more Metroidvanias, more Souls likes, and honestly, I want more action RPGs like this. Now that I'm, now that I'm like getting into them, because we played Book of Demons recently, we played Diablo three recently. Like, I do actually want to spend some amount of time trying to get through as many as I can. Hello. I thought you would come. How could you resist the call of Wardrock? Once this colossus has subdued you, your transformation will be complete. Hello, thing. Man, I love indie games. They're not, like, super like, stand out in a lot of cases. Let's watch him melt. I didn't have to lift a finger. <laughs> okay, so let's get rid of some of this. Is that belt better? Mm, no. Yes? No. Shield's not much better. Okay, we're starting to load up on embers. Which is a problem. Okay, is that better? Elemental ice, increased magic find. Yeah, that seems better. Okay, what about these? Requires dexterity. I can't carry anymore. Remember right there's a button that actually makes it so your your dog will actually go pick things up. I don't remember what the uh, button for that was. But we leveled up. I guess let's keep going pet mastery. It's like the least interesting thing I can put points into. But I figure uh, we can just dump points into that until it hits level 30. And then we can actually start doing the interesting stuff. Tremors are subsiding. My faith in you was well placed. Have you encountered Master Ulrich again? I will have to deal with him eventually. I cannot allow him to become a servant of darkness. We are approaching the Ember Forge. One final obstacle remains. The Overseer's notes mention an ancient fortress infested with goblins. The 
hordes prevented him from ever reaching the Dwarven Fortress itself. Defeat the goblins, and we'll be close to our goal. Okay, so we want to go back, turn in the quest, and then actually go find level 10 and finish that one other quest because I'm just lazy and Anything skipped it. Primal Ember, incredible. The Ember Blight is growing stronger as we obtain samples from deeper in the mountain. I would say that something in the depths is influence the, influencing the entire Ember Vein. But of course, that's absurd. Nothing is powerful enough to do that. Perhaps it's just the spirits of the lost clinging to the veins. Where the pieces you brought me are near to one another, the blight appears to be amplified. I'll keep them well separated from now on, but I need more samples for study. Savage Ember has sometimes been found in the caldera of volcanoes. If you delve deep enough, you may find the molten rock required for its creation. Please, bring me any samples you come across. Okay. So we've got... Not stuff to sell, we've got stuff to drop off. Potions. And how many stat points? I've got like easily an extra 30 in almost every stat if I really wanted to. Okay. What is this? Ice damage, caster speed. We might as well. Okay, let's move these over sell everything. Make buttloads of money. Okay. Yeah, somebody had said, by the way, identify items. They sell for more. They were right. They do. Okay, what else do we have? We have bling. Okay. Well, that's a little bit outside of my uh, price range, honestly. But it's definitely cool. Uh, let's see. You. Can we upgrade this? How much is it going to cost? Okay. Not actually sure if this is really worth it, but I'm just going to make this stupid super ring until it tells me to stop. It doesn't seem like there's a limit here. Well, we're just going to make the stupid super ring. And this way I'll just not replace this ring for a considerable amount of time. And then probably jam some... Jam some things into it. Okay, enchantment overload. Admittedly, most of these are just boring stat bonuses, but you know what? It's nice. It's a good ring. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Next order of business. Hmm... Back to cold embers. Dull, poor embers. I have to figure out which of these can even mush together. Dull, deep embers. Because a lot of these are completely different. Discolored, cracked, dull. Oh, and another discolored. Anything else? It'd be nice if we could actually have, like, a sort button in here. Oh, why the hell do I have potions in here? I certainly don't need them. Okay, so let's mush these together. But yeah, I just want to... I just want to jam all these down. Now, I could put something into my... Gaston's banned, but like most of these just give like small stat bonuses, and I'm like, eh, I'm not convinced they're necessary. Okay, and it doesn't look like anything else can mush together there. Uh, let's grab the that. Damn, these are some sweet weapons that I just straight up am never going to be able to use. Oh, shadow guys. Oh. I was looking my own helmet. Foolishly. I could have replaced my helmet. It's kind of crap. A lot of my stuff is kind of crap, honestly, but th that's okay. Uh, let's see. What do we do next? 
I'll go look at the fish guy for a second. Because if I remember right... There's some way to do it permanently. Oh, cat and dog permanently. Never mind. Firefish, firefish. What is a Varkalin? I'm not sure. We could also tr transform it into a mimic. Um, hmm. All right. I'll probably look into that more later. What else do we have? Zombies 4, Skeleton 4, Zombies 5, but requires a higher level. Arches 5, Zombies 5, nothing. Okay, so we want to go back to level 10. Try the Estherian runes, and if it's not the Estherian runes, we'll go to a different one. Uh, let's see, what level is this? If I do Exit Portal, will it tell me what level I'm on? Floor 17. Okay, so... Oh, wow. I missed a lot. Is this even worth it? I'm, I'm gonna have to do some serious backtracking to find this dude. So, Overseer's Chamber. I guess I can always walk up and down from wherever... It, yeah, it's probably a good idea. I must have just blown straight past the mid-boss. Because it doesn't actually say what floor I'm on. Which one of these is going to be floor 10? 